you and I were about to start our discussion. And I said to you, RJ, remember, uh, did you bring some watches for show and tell? And he goes, yeah, let me grab one of the boxes. <laughs> Folks, what we're about to see is one of the boxes. When I came over to your home and you're going to go grab the box for the Omega, you left me with one yeah. of the boxes. <laughs> one of these boxes is like beyond, this is like 10 people's grails. Like, please, <laughs> without further ado, buddy, you brought show and tell. Let's see them. What do we yeah, got today? Well, this one. So we saw one of them already because it's 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 eclectic. So mm -hmm. that's good. This one, um, so th this is the one that um, like is 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 the current rotation. So I'm not sure how well you can see. Well, let's maybe we start pulling up one by one. Okay, so, let's see that. Okay, we can see them pretty so well. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so and maybe we can start few, pulling them out a couple yeah. one at a time. And you know, people are drooling right now on their mouse pads seeing this. Well, so, okay, so here's the, um, this was actually, ironically, the first watch I bought because I was looking for a dress watch. Okay. Uh, this is the, the Breguet Marine Big Date. And uh, this is their sports watch. <laughs> and at the time, this was, for me, as dressy as I was willing to get. Let's see the back but, of it. Uh, what's that? The back of it? The back, oh, it's got the, the display back. And Beautiful, Breguet. nice clear back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Breguet is one of those so, brands. It's funny, like not a lot of mainstream people necessarily know, but the collectors love it. I love Breguet. So great choice. If, uh, if Breguet was controlled by anyone but Swatch Group, it would be in the same conversation with Patek almost every time. So these are, and, and right now I'm a Breguet high because I, I think they're so undervalued. I, I agree. That's the same thing with the Suda. And I, it, it breaks my heart yeah. that the Swatch Group is dealing with them because it's such a good piece, but... Yeah. Nobody knows because they're just focusing on Omega, essentially. Yeah, yeah, and well, it's watch groups interesting because it's like um, you've got the two divisions there with the the, the daughter Hayek and, and the son Hayek, and they've got their favorite brands. And and he likes Omega a lot. Like she's a big fan of Blanc Pen, and and they kind of you know they 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 fight <laughs> amongst the, each other, and they've got this interesting strategy that is from Hayek Sr., where he had the, the wedding cake philosophy, yes. whereas none of the flavors can blend. And so when, um, when Omega, there was a time where Omega and Rolex were, were very tightly competing and, and we were big into Omega. And so we got invited to a few other things. I was chatting with Stephen Urquhart. Yes. I said, like, you, you guys are, are you and Rolex are, are neck and neck, but what I don't understand, why aren't you everywhere that Rolex is? You've got Federer in tennis. Where's the Omega's tennis guy? And he said, no, tennis is Longines. And, and so they wouldn't, let, they wouldn't let Swatch Group brands compete with each other. And then we were uh, showing them um, old Omegas from the archives. And they had the moon phase and the day date and the dress watch. I was like, this is a fantastic watch. Why don't you guys bring this back? And he says, no, that's, that's Blanc Pen. And Blancpain has a, a dial very similar. So Swatch Group won't let them interact. They won't let the layers of the cake blend into each other. So they're very restricted by, by the heads up. Whereas uh, something like Richemont, they will let them all just do their thing. So they don't care that JLC and, and Vacheron have similar designs or similar price points or are advertising in the same space. So Richemont's a little better at letting each brand do their own thing where a swatch controls everything just look at the moon swatch <laughs> you can't tell me omega was was happy about that and then uh but swatch, it's like, pe it's like people don't realize that. people don't realize in cars for example that volkswagen owns almost every single brand you know and, <laughs> yeah. and when it comes to watches you see all these brands and they're thinking why is this watch competing with this one no they're the same company it doesn't you know people yeah. understand there's like essentially three companies that control everything and then there's the independence and then Rolex is just at its own level right now, yeah. obviously, but, uh, but, but you look at the independence and that's yeah. where you see uh, Rolex, I gained a lot of respect for the way they did business before things went crazy mm -hmm. is because w when you started to see the, the releases and, and everything, and you watched Rolex sit back and do its thing, you realize they were playing the long game. And when some of the other brands like, the Megan when another conversation with Stephen Urquhart when they first introduced the dark side of the moon. Yes. And everybody was going crazy for it. Yeah. I said, you guys have something really special here. You've got, this is your Daytona. 
-hmm. you've got people paying full retail for an Omega, which normally wouldn't happen. Now, this was at a time when you know you, you would expect at least 20 points off an Omega if you walked into a, a dealer. Easy. Yep. I said, now you've got people lining up for it. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is hold it back, make people earn the right. They were they were rolling out their boutique model at the time to make this a boutique exclusive, you know, make people feel like they have to earn the right to buy yep. this. And, and he's like, oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. But it was a big seller. So yep. what they did instead was they gave us five more of them <laughs> in every color combination and every iteration. And they flooded to the market to the point where you started to see it on Joma shop for 50% off. And, yep. and uh, I was upset by that, but I realized that he had a hell of a bonus that quarter because he had fantastic sales. And, and in those big, those big conglomerates, that's what it really comes down to is keeping the shareholders happy, meeting your quotas, whereas Rolex, AP, Patek, they, they can sit back and play the long game. So they can, they can restrict production because they don't care about next quarter. But you say that, I think about Panerai immediately, yeah. you know, Panerai had the secret sauce, everything yeah. for the going and they just flushed it all. Now they're starting to make their rebound, right? Yeah. Luckily enough for them. And, you know, they had such a unique product, you in know, a, in, a, in a world of watches that so many similarities, they were just a really unique one. And then they yeah. decided let's flood and flood and flood. Let's make a million special editions. Let's make every yeah. variation of it. Let's change how the, the quality of the product and, yeah, you know, people uh, that the one you're holding right now. Yeah. See, it's it's funny. A lot of people don't know Longa, but it's you know Longa. consider you know to tell us as far as people talk about what's the the holy trinity. Like, what is yeah. in your estimation? What are the top three? Well, I I still don't understand what AP is doing there, and I love AP, mm -hmm. but I, I I really don't think it belongs in in that that conversation. I mean, Patek, yes, yes, and and you know, I have I have only the one. The one Patek, which is the the dressy Calatrava, which okay. uh, this is actually which a, is their Deville, you know, which which is uh, yeah, Rolex yeah, Cellini. Their, Everybody their... has the version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this is your your classic dress watch. Yeah, and um, with the display back, this is uh, yeah. this one had a very short production run. Okay, and uh, I tend to be attracted to watches that everybody else seems to hate. <laughs> so this one. But you and I because, have similar taste, which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I told you we're, we're watch brothers from different mothers, but yeah. uh, I appreciate where you're so, coming so from. The, this was the, the Calatrava, but it was at the time when the trend was to bigger watches. Mm -hmm. And so this one is 38 millimeter dial and bezel. But what they did effectively was slap it on a much smaller watches chasis. So mm -hmm. you see where the lugs actually are and you see the size of the movement. And yes. it's like this big saucer over top. Mm -hmm. So they basically made a 38 millimeter watch with a 33 millimeter movement and, and a smaller base. So effectively they slapped this, this bigger saucer onto a smaller plate. So you see the, the lugs actually look really tiny because yes. they were meant to, they were meant to fit the case over here as opposed to up here, but it, it makes for a really nice dress watch and, and a, streamlined look and and so the strap is 16 millimeters instead look at the of deployant 18. on that one like the deployant yeah. the 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 clasp so, is just gorgeous so that's where um so this is my one patek but you know the finishing and and the details are amazing and when you look at some of their actual complications they're just outstanding and and i think that it really bothers them that anyone that all anyone cares about is is the novelist that was meant to be their entry level um, introductory to the brand piece. And yep. so I think that to some level, um, it frustrates the, the higher ups that all anyone wants is their, what they thought was their crappiest entry level affordable piece. And if you and I um, want to pick up a rubber strap Aquanaut, how are we go, <laughs> how are we going to do in that one? We're going to be on a what? 800 year yeah. waiting list. Yeah. Which they is don't even entertain the idea. What what is it? A, retail, retail on a on a rubber strap Aquanaut retail is what 25, 30? 25. I, I and that's the thing. I remember yeah, even the the Nautilus, I remember leaving that at the jeweler's case so yeah. many times. All the time. Three yeah. three separate times. Yeah. And it's because at the time I think it was like an eighteen thousand dollar watch mm -hmm. and it didn't feel like it was worth eighteen thousand. And and at the time, I think the first time I left it, I had just gotten my um my uh, day date, my my solid yellow gold presidential day date. And I think I paid 
12,000 for it or something ridiculous. Yeah. And I was like, this is a $12,000 watch. There's no way this is an ATA. It was yeah. flimsy and, and didn't really do much for me. That's why I say I didn't, I didn't like it at 18. I sure as hell don't love it at 80. And, and the Aquanaut, same thing. I remember leaving that at, at 18. And um, now it was like 80,000 or, or more than that. For rubber so, strap, folks. Yeah. Rubber strap. For, so, for a basic 300. But Langa, okay. I think, definitely belongs in the in the Holy Trinity. Langa is an interesting brand right now. Mm -hmm. This is, um, I only have two. I have this one in the, the, the time zone. Okay. But the only finishing. Two. The detail, only two. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the finishing and the details are, are amazing. And and Langa right now, what's interesting is this has the micro rotor. It's their their automatic Saxonia, but um, everybody thinks it's all Swiss, it's all Swiss watches, right? Langa. No, this Langa is German. Yeah, right. So so and they're and they're and they're considered one of the tops, and they're not a Swiss brand. No, and and they're, um, they're part of Richemont Group. Mm -hmm. But what's going on with Langa right now is that Tell their us. production is legitimately low and slow. And they they hand finish everything and the movement after it's assembled and they they test it and it's accurate and it passes their tests. Then they deassemble it and reassemble again. And and each person's finishing is a little bit unique. So you know who finished the movement based on some of the, the finishing and the guilloche. And so they have a really slow production. And the problem they're facing now is um, as demand ramps up. And they're starting to gain attention. They just can't keep up with production, and so now you're starting to see these kind of go up a bit on the secondary because nobody wants to wait. <laughs> no one, no one has yeah. the patience to wait. They just all want it now. But uh, but Lang is amazing. I I would agree with you as well. I mean, I, I would say the most uh, quote unquote experts will say Patek, AP, and Vacheron are the three. But I agree with yeah. you that 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 Langa has yeah. to be in that conversation. Yeah, Vacheron, Vacheron, I really like. But well, there's another brand too that it's highly underrated. About, it's all become about the overseas mm -hmm. and um, some of the Vacheron, their complications, their world timers, they're amazing. That's the the Samurai Lion. <laughs> so that's the big heavy uh, that's, Grand Seiko. That's the big Grand Seiko. That's not Daytona, folks. You're looking at. You think it is? No, it's not. It's a Grand Seiko. Massive heavy watch. I love this watch. It looks it, heavy. It's a. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a statement piece. Uh, it's their lion's claw case, but this one has so many different points of light. And, and with their polishing, you've got the mirrored Zeratsu polish against the brush. Amazing. This one, this one shines. And then the dial is, is textured. It's their, their lion's main dial. This it's, is when you're going to go chop a, trees and you're going to do some bench. Then you're going to go put that watch a, on. It, it's a GMT chronograph spring drive. There's so many functions that I've never used. That's the other. Oh, there's the uh, there's the Panerai. There's the Panerai. It's, okay. uh, submersible. You have to have one Panerai. I've never I, had actually. One... I, I I always I'm... said I've never have more than one because yes. they're so similar. Yeah. But I, have, I have this one and I have the Lumina Marina, which I actually do have a very different wrist presence. So the, the Lumina Marina is like their dress watch by comparison. Yes. It's a don't bezel. hate me, but I really want a Radomir. That's uh, without the crown oh, yeah. guard. <laughs> I like the Radomirs, like, you know, and it, it's it's one of those things. To me, Panerai with that crown guard is like a breathling, like the style of the bracelet. You either love it or yeah. you hate it, you know? Uh -huh. It's kind of like when, when I do the whole comparison of the biggies, you're yeah. either an AP guy or you're a Patek guy, generally. You're not both. You favor one or the other the same way you like yeah. the Stones or you like the Beatles. <laughs> if you're picking AP or Patek, you're picking Patek, correct? Uh, it, it depends. So depends on the model? The Royal Oak, right? Yeah. I, have, I have three Royal Oaks. Oh, but, wow. Okay, um, okay. I don't see them as horology i don't see them as uh, near the same level and even you know they've got some minute repeaters and they've got uh, their tourbillon but they just stuff it in the royal oak case <laughs> and so for me the beauty of patek is is the the variability in their case design and their models and yet they're still all on that amazing level so you look at their their perpetual calendars and their minute repeaters and they're very different than their sports watches and their Nautilus, you know, as, as opposed to AP, just keep stuffing everything into the Royal Oak case. Yes. And <laughs> other than the code, which, which I don't mind the code, but uh, again, I, I would be all in on the code if it was 18,000, but at, at 
30 and change it's just there's so much so much better watches for that that price range it's funny when we talk in cwc and we go and we go on the forums right and we yeah. and we come and then we come on and we do the virtual talks i remember like i i love watches i study them but i still feel like such an amateur because like oh i like the 1197 case no yeah. i prefer the 270 i'm like yeah like i i'm sorry i don't memorize the stuff and people take it that seriously They're oh, like yeah, yeah the, like the 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 width this one went by one millimeter like wow <laughs> like this is how intense people are tell us what's yeah. the other one we got holding there well yeah that's why i said when you go to like some of the watch meetups it's yes. like you know if you're a star trek fan I was like, yeah, I like Star Trek. I watched Next Generation. I um, watch the movies. I, I'm a Trekkie. I know some of the characters. Then you go to some of these things and people are speaking Klingon to each other. Yeah. <laughs> like you're in, a, you're in a completely different zone. But yeah, I, I get a lot of that, especially Grand Seiko guys are, are some of the worst. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's the SBG6212. I was like, oh, shit <laughs> yeah like the, but, you know you know the first the, if you're if you're gonna learn anything when you're starting off in-house movement versus eta <laughs> go research that eta go learn up eta in-house movement and look at all those debates on your brand mm -hmm. and have fun with that there's gonna be forums yeah. till the end of time on that <laughs> yeah yeah you'll be up all night so that's the globe master oh yeah so this one um you know fewer iterations so was, of that one that's that one's a yes. very doesn't have all the I, worlds and uh, countries in yeah, there. Yeah, so this was the original, uh, the mm -hmm. first launch. Yes. And um, so this one, this one I love. I just that classic dress watch, but yep. the fluted, the fluted bezel, which they get upset if you call it a fluted bezel. Because uh, the bezel looks very coin. familiar to me. Yeah, it looks like it's a I, coin bezel that, okay. <laughs> that goes back to the. Uh, and is that a rubber strap or a leather strap on that one? Has nothing to do with Rolex. They just no, it's leather strap, and so and yep. it's got the uh, the platinum stitching. Thank you for enjoying today's episode of the Chosen Life Podcast. Go ahead and hit the subscription button below and the notification bell to catch all of our great shows. And remember to contact the Chosen Lawyers when you are ready for your next real estate and commercial transaction. Go to Cormans.ca.